everyone, my name is Maddie. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my slightly more chill than normal December wrap up. So for anyone who hasn't watched basically any of my videos because I've not shut up about this for ages, I did start a new job in the last week actually. I started on the Monday, I'm filming this on Sunday and therefore my energy levels are a little bit lower this week, so in a very intense first week. And therefore, we're going a bit more chill with this. We're in a different area. I just want to chill on my sofa. My hair is up, which I'm trying to convince myself is a style choice, not just the fact that it really needs washing later today. But I need to get this filmed, because normally my wrap-up would be up like a week before this, and I've not even filmed it yet. So we're filming it right now. So overall, my reading month of December was pretty good, considering the situation. As many of you know, I was moving. I was obviously preparing for my job. So much was going on. But I actually ended up reading a decent bit more than I expected. I didn't read basically at all for the first half of the month and then the last week or so I really picked it back up, which I'm really grateful for. But as always, we're gonna start with stats, so let's get into that. So starting out as always with the number of books I read, I did read eight, well, kind of eight, a couple of novellas, but we're calling it eight, which ended up with my annual goal, my 2020 goal being at 111 out of 100, which was my revised goal for the year. I did pass it in November, but that's where we ended up, which I'm very, very happy with. And it is actually my best reading year ever, but there will be a whole 2020 stats video coming soon. So keep an eye out for that. In terms of number of pages, this is where it starts to reflect the kind of things I was reading. I read a total of 2,316 pages in the month, which works out to 75 a day, which is very much below the 100 a day I aim for. But as I said, I read quite a few novellas. I read some graphic novels. It was necessary, but I read, so I'm not complaining at all. And then again, reflecting this, the average length of book that I read was 289 pages. So again, lower than normal. Normally it's between 300 and 350, but I really don't care. So then getting more into like the content of the books, we're going to go with the age range of the books I read or the intended audience. And I did read five adult books and three YA books. So back to sort of my normal, roughly 50-50, slightly leaning towards adult about what I would expect. And then for genre, I did read six fantasy books and one contemporary and then really out of the ordinary for me, one non-fiction book. How weird is that? That's not a thing that I normally do. And then getting into star rating, it was a pretty decent month. We had two five-star reads, which were both re-reads, four four-star reads, one three-star read, and then one which I'm just calling unrated, which is the non-fiction book. I don't tend to rate non-fiction. Um, I'll give comments on it as we'll see in this video, but I don't really feel like I can give it a star rating. So I haven't. So with all that out of the way, Let's get into talking about what books I actually read and what I thought of them. So kicking off the first book I read in the month, which was one I actually started in November and just finished at the beginning of December, is The Bone Child Daughter by Andrea Stewart. This was the November Phase and Gaze book club pick. And unfortunately, this I didn't love. I think I ended up giving this a 3.5 stars, I think is kind of where I ended up with it. It was okay. The first maybe 120 pages of this I adored. I was so invested. I was so intrigued. I was struggling because I felt like I couldn't connect everyone, but you know, I thought that's going to come later in the story. I'll just be patient and wait. And it did, but it didn't come in the way I wish it had. I still didn't follow it. I didn't particularly feel for the characters. I'm not going to lie. Having read this like six weeks ago now, I am really struggling to remember why I didn't love it. But I just remember being a bit bored. I wasn't that drawn in. If you do want more of like my thoughts and more of a discussion about this book, I would recommend watching the Face and Gaze live show, which I will link. I think it was on my channel for this one because we go into great detail there of what we actually thought of it. And that was much more recent after me finishing it. So I would have had a much more coherent thought process then. But yeah, overall it was definitely a disappointing read because I've seen a lot of people giving it five stars, absolutely loving it. And although I didn't dislike it, it definitely wasn't a five star read for me which is a massive shame. I guess just to give you some idea of what I thought of this, I'll break it down to the three basic like character world and writing. So characters were okay. We followed a vast array of characters and I felt like I didn't really connect to any of them bar maybe one. I can't remember their names at all. So overall, I just wasn't particularly drawn in by any of the characters. It was okay. I didn't love it other than Mephi, who's like the little animal companion. We liked him a lot. He was super cute, but again, not really a main character. In terms of world, it could have been brilliant. I was really, really, really intrigued by it. At the beginning of the book, the world seemed like it was going to be so intricate and so fascinating, but I felt like it was not done to the extent it could have been. It seemed like it was going to be this really complex, interesting magic system, and it was so simple 
that as the book progressed the magic system was just there and it didn't really provide anything interesting which was really disappointing and then writing I don't remember it being interesting and therefore I don't think it was particularly good particularly bad I think it just told the story which is fine but I'm someone who really likes pretty writing so I think that would have added to it for me but yeah overall 3.5 star didn't love it may or may not pick up the sequel it was okay it was it was an okay read I don't really have much more to say on it than that the next book I read was The Pale Dreamer by Samantha Shannon, which is a novella for the Bone Season series. I did actually pick up the Bone Season first, but I was struggling to get into it. I felt like I didn't understand the world, I didn't understand the characters and their motivations. And so the wonderful Steph from Steph Loves, who I will link down below, did contact me and say I would really suggest you read the novella first, as it adds a lot to the story. I had purposely not read it because I'm normally very cautious reading prequel novellas that were published after in case they spoil anything or hint at anything I don't want to know yet but I took her advice and I went and read it and yes it was definitely the right call. So as I kind of said this is a prequel to The Bone Season, it does follow Paige who is the main character in The Bone Season and I'll do a quick synopsis for Bone Season when I'm talking about that as you can see is the next book but this does follow Paige before the beginning of The Bone Season in Sion in London and I don't really know what to say, it's a difficult one to summarise because it's only a short story but it's basically when she's first joining this sort of underground syndicate of people who are clairvoyant and you're getting to know her and the other characters and it is definitely so so useful in learning about the characters and learning about the world because I really felt with The Bone Season, which again I'll say more in a minute when I'm actually talking about it, it throws you in without really any explanation I really felt and I was really starting to get into it for that reason. I didn't understand why the characters were acting how they were, I didn't understand why the world was how it was and so reading The Pale Dreamer first made so much difference. I gave it four stars, I really enjoyed it, it's only like 70 pages and I think it's like 99p on Kindle so highly recommend giving that a go if you do want to get into the bone season and definitely giving it a go before reading the bone season. But then of course that leads on very nicely to the third book I read in the month which is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon, is anyone surprised? Um, again I gave this four stars, I really enjoyed it. As I've already mentioned I did struggle to get into it, I felt like the world really really was not explained. I'm fine with info dumping, I'm fine with being thrown in, but I felt like all we knew is there were clairvoyants, some people didn't like the clairvoyants, and there was this weird dystopian world. There was no almost flashback to how this had come about, how the clairvoyants had been seen as a bad thing, why they were seen as a bad thing, how they'd been oppressed. Just that whole progression of time seemed to be missed and we just went in when it was already like this with no backstory, which I struggled with. As the book progressed more of this was explained, we got some kind of flashbacks, we got some bits like that, so it did get better um, and I ended up really really enjoying it. I am very intrigued to see where the mind order goes from this. I didn't love this as much as I expected but I'm very very optimistic that the rest of the books in the series I will now that I know the world, now I know the characters, now I feel for them, I think I'll get much more invested in the mind order and the rest of the books. But yeah, overall a four star, a really solid read, but not like a new favourite or anything yet, though I still have a lot of hope for this series being a new favourite by the time I'm maybe not done with it, but caught up with it slightly more. This was also on my sort of top series to read in 2021 list, so although I got to it a little bit early, I'm starting to make progress on that list, which I'm very happy about. I would also suggest keeping an eye out for a reading vlog of this series if you'd like more thoughts. It may be a couple months until it comes out, but it's a thing that may be coming and it might be part of the dystopia project so keep eyes peeled if you want to know more thoughts about both this book and the rest of the series. Next up I read I'll Be Home for Christmas by Mason Diva. This is a super super cute little novella published by Mason Diva as a sort of fun Christmas novella. It is a kind of sequel companion novel to their book I Wish You All the Best which I read in 2019 I think which is a super super fantastic YA LGBT contemporary story which I'd highly recommend. And this is just a really cute, Christmassy, adorable novella. I had the best time reading it. I read it on Christmas Day in one sitting. It was exactly what I wanted. Um, it's just adorable. And like one of the central characters is a golden retriever. And if a dog features highly in a book, I am happy. So I had the best time reading this. It made me so happy. It's so sweet. I really loved being back with Nathan and Ben. It was just adorable. 
highly recommend you check it out. And also the way it is being sold is a pay as much as you want, kind of pay as much as you can. And all of the proceeds are going to, I've just checked, the National Centre for Transgender Equality, which is a charity. So if you have any interest in picking this one up, please do so. The money is going to a good place. And it's super cute and fun and Christmassy. And I know we're past Christmas now, but I'm still feeling those like Christmassy, wintry holiday vibes. So I'd recommend it. The next book I read was Days of Blood and Starlight by Lady Taylor. This is the second book in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. And I did read this for Dosa Balong, which is a read-along I'm hosting. If you want to join in, we are reading the third book, Dreams of Gods and Monsters, in January, with a live show at the beginning of February. So there is still time to catch up and join in for the final live show. We will also be reading Night of Cake and Puppets in January. Well, I've already read it, but we're going to be talking about that in the final live show as well. So feel free to join us. But for now, we're here to talk about Days of Blood and Starlight. As I said, this is the second book. It is a very, very different tone to Daughter of Smoke and Bone. And I know some people aren't liking it for that reason, which is understandable. I would probably say that I didn't enjoy it as much of Daughter of Smoke and Bone, but it's still a five star read. There's basically no question that every book in this series is going to be a five star for me. I just love it so much. The writing is so beautiful. I love the characters so many wonderful things and I just absolutely adore it. But to give a very quick plot overview of the series, though I've given it many times on my channel, this does follow Karu, who is a slightly odd girl. She has blue hair, which grows naturally blue. She has these tattoos and her family seems to be this sort of man slash beast and some other strange creatures and she disappears for long periods of time and no one knows why and basically one day it ends up that she has lost connection to this person who is her family and she gets launched into this whole fantasy series of events and it's phenomenal it's interesting the writing is beautiful my only criticism and that's not even a criticism of this book is that it is significantly slower than the first book like significantly slower the first half of this book I wouldn't say that not a lot happens, but it happens much, 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 much slower than the first book. And it does take some time for everything to ramp back up and sort of maybe, maybe very slight spoilers. So just skip like 10 seconds ahead if you don't want to see this. But a lot of the characters in this book aren't necessarily together for the whole book. And so that kind of feels like it slows the pace down slightly because you're not seeing their interactions. But overall, I actually think it's done really well. I love seeing all the characters separately. I love seeing all the individual storylines of all the characters, but I can see why it reads a lot slower for some people. And so if you're not a fan of the lyrical writing, there's not a lot happening in the first half of this book to keep you interested. But I personally loved it and cannot wait to read Dreams, Gods and Monsters this month. I'm so excited to get to it and finish this series. Next up, I did read Saga Volume 4. Yeah, Volume 4, I'm losing track a little bit. I don't have too much to say for this. I have spoken about these books repeatedly. This one is four stars, just like the first three volumes were for me. I'm still really enjoying it. I am loving the intricacy and how much we're starting to get to know other characters. I, I just, I can't get over how quickly these books switch tone. Like it goes instantly from graphic violence to explicit sexual content to this. A very, very cute seal with an axe and dungarees. And it's just, it's an absolute trip. And I love reading it. It keeps me so interested. And I've got volumes five and six, which I'm probably gonna be reading over the next couple of months. But I don't have too much to add to what I said about the series before. It's still really interesting. It's still really complex. I am still astounded with how they cram so much story into such short little volumes. But a very quick overview, this is kind of like a Romeo and Juliet-esque story. It follows two people from different races who are at war and they have got married and had a child. And so both sides of the war now kind of hate them because they're considered betraying both sides. It's very intense. There's so much going on. Um, I don't really know how to sum it up by volume four because of the amount that has happened in the first three volumes. But it's good. And I would recommend checking it out if you want a sci-fi very adult graphic novel series. Getting down to the final couple of books, next we have Night of Cake and Puppets by Lainey Taylor. I already mentioned that I read this one this month. This is another reread. I realised when adding this to Goodreads, I have read this book every year for the past three years. This is probably one of my most read books now because having only been reading for a few years, I don't have that many books I've reread lots of times. Um, but it is still adorable. This is illustrated by Jim D. Bartolo, which is Lainey Taylor's husband. And his illustration style is just absolutely stunning like absolutely stunning i love it so much and it sums up the world so well and this is i always pick this one out as my favorite illustration i actually have a colored art print of that moment because i love it 
and it's just it's such a wholesome read for anyone who doesn't know this is the story of mick and Susanna, who are two of the kind of side characters in the daughter smoke and bone series and it is the story of the night that they first got together it's super cute it's super wholesome it takes like half an hour to an hour to read because it's got not a lot of text on a page and lots of illustrations and then in the back it has like some of Carew's sketchbook and it has almost a graphic novel of parts of Daughter of Smoke and Bone. It's just great. I love it a lot. Um, I feel the need to show you it under the dust jacket because it's one of my favourite books ever. Look at this. So you have that on the front, ombre stunning spine and then this on the back. It's beautiful. I love it. It's a five star read. Of course it's a five star read. It's written by Lainey Taylor. I don't think I'm actually physically capable of rating a Lainey Taylor book below five stars. That would be sacrilegious. So five stars, no dick and puppets. I love it. I'll probably reread it again next year because that seems to be what I do. And then the final book, which I will fully understand if people click off the video for this one because it is probably not interesting to a lot of people. That is The Goal by I don't even know who. Eliyahu M. Goldratt, apparently, and Jeff Cox. I don't know about the author of this book particularly. This is a non-fiction book. I had to read this for work. I have thoughts. So this started off, at the first 25 pages, I did not know how the hell I was going to get through this book. It was so strange because it's a non-fiction book told in a story. So you're learning all this stuff about like business and operational consultants and kind of processes for efficiency and how a business should be run, which is all very interesting. But it's told through the storyline of like one guy trying to save the manufacturing plant he works at, which is fine when you get into like the business side of things. But there is so much focus on his marital problems, which I don't quite understand if I'm honest. But nonetheless, it did teach me a lot. The actual business content of this was very, very interesting to someone like me, because obviously it's an area I'm interested in as I'm going into operational consultancy. So I really enjoyed it and it has definitely been very beneficial. My first week of work, as I mentioned, I've just finished and the number of times something got mentioned, which I could refer back to this in my head and be like, oh, I have already kind of come across a case study for this, which really helped. So they were right in making us all read this. But why the marital problems were necessary and why the kind of whole intense storyline was necessary, I don't understand. I understand why it wasn't just like, here's this process, here's this process, because that is harder to take in, context really helps. But there was so much about his family and marriage and just life that felt a little bit unnecessary. But nonetheless, it was interesting, it was a good read. I would recommend it if you're interested in like business processes and sort of efficiency in businesses. But I realise that's probably not for most people on this channel as most of us read more fiction. But that is it. Those are the books that I read this month, plus a couple of eBooks. As I already said, I am pretty happy with what I got through this month. It was certainly more than I expected it to be when the month started with how busy I was, but I got through it and January is already going a lot better. So fingers crossed I'll have a decent wrap up at the end of January for you all. But that's it for the video. I think this is a bit of a chaotic wrap up. I, as I said, I'm very exhausted. So I'm not sure how coherent my thoughts have been, but I tried and it needs to go up. So that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have you read any of these books? What are your thoughts on the books? How did your last month of the year go in terms of reading? Just let me know. I love chatting to you guys in the comments. That is it. So subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. All the links to other social media as well as book clubs and read logs that I host are linked down below in the description as always if you want to take part in any of those. That's it for the video. So bye and I'll see you in the next one.